Welcome, everyone, to Wednesday Night Live. Uh, we are back another week. Uh, Tim and me, almost said I, Tim and me are here. Uh, Philip will be here shortly, I, I I hope. I think he'll be here shortly. I can be Philip. I, you you could know, be I both. Can just, I could be both personalities. I yeah, can switch yeah. back and forth. Mm -hmm. Philip will be your uh, second persona. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to look more studious and yeah. come up with a lot of bigger words and stuff, but... I think I could pull it off. I I think you could. I think you could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is on the agenda today? Spanish, uh, Spanish, <laughs> Spain, Spain launches flavor ban. Uh, we have that on the agenda. Also, lawsuit. I was trying to get Gregory on, uh, but he's hopping on a plane. Uh, so we'll try to get him back on uh, next week. We'll talk a little bit about this lawsuit challenge in Kentucky. Uh, with the PMTA registry law. So we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit uh, as well as uh, just kind of open topics, guys, anything you guys want to talk about in the chat, uh, let us know. Uh, we're open to suggestions today. There's, it's so hard to pick. I mean, actually this week has kind of been like, it's been kind of slow. Yeah. As far as, as, as news. I mean, there's just, there's lawsuit after lawsuit just flying all over. It's almost impossible to figure out. Uh, which one to kind of focus on uh, here lately because we got them all over the place and uh, uh, which ones are closer to being finalized, which ones are, you know, just in the uh, beginning process. Uh, but I, uh, this one here in Kentucky, yeah. I guess this is official. So this would go into effect, I think, uh, at January 1st of 2025, if it goes through, if this lawsuit doesn't, uh, yeah, January 1st of 2025. So, uh, and it's a huge one, and uh, I can see why uh, the hemp business is also involved in it as well. So I uh, will dig into that article. Uh, and what do you got, Timmy? You got some advocacy? I, I don't know. And I, I, my interest is now peaked, Peggy. Let's talk <laughs> about this video game vape. It's dumb. Mm. I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to agree with you before I even know anything about it. <laughs> but I'm going to do a little background research on this because I think we've already experienced dumb. You know, we had the we had the vape hoodie, we had yeah. a vape thing that looked like a hand grenade. So I mean, there's been some. Well, we and then we, didn't we have like a a vape device that was like an MP3 player too, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, people have tried all kinds of crazy shit, and uh, and and it's you know it's fun, but a a video game vape. Right? Oh, okay, it's a game on a vape. I think yeah, this was uh, up a couple years ago too, and it got kind oh, of. Oh, it's a watch. Okay, we've done the watch too. The watch is not a foreign uh, concept. We've done the watch before. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Big D Vapors has them, and it's a, it's a. Here, uh, I will. I hate doing this. I am over twenty one. I am over twenty one, Tim. I don't know. I question that. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait i'm on the laptop i need to jump over to this thingy here on the other one. Oh, and the keyboard's behind it uh hold on here uh video game vape all right let's and, see what this stupid thing right. looks like all right here we go here we go present john present and share your screen my friend and share it i must verify that i am 21 are you kidding me are you kidding me <laughs> Uh, it I mean, is a, oh god, it's 18 bucks. Yep, craft Less box 30. <laughs> 20. Oh, so they're disposables. So not only are we throwing away lithium batteries, we're throwing mm -hmm. away digital screens that people are playing like low grade tetris type games on a vape right is yeah, that yeah, is that yeah gimmick? pretty much that's pretty much I mean, it come on people i mean you know all right yes adults Ooh. like video games too i yeah. i can i can attest to yeah. that all right yeah. so i'm not you know i'm i'm no stranger to gaming 
I can vape while I game. Okay. So I've already got that going for me, but I yeah. just think if you're gonna try to just at least be prudent in this time and day, this to me just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right. If, if they weren't going to say that colors and interesting flavor mm -hmm. names and bottles and uh, all that stuff is, you know, flavors are interesting to kids. What kid isn't going to want a disposable with a right. video game on it? Yeah, right. and maybe, maybe I'm, well, yeah, what is this website? Well, too, you got to think, too. I mean, if you're under 21 and you have this thing, you're not just freely playing this while you're walking around because you already know you're not supposed to have it. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. And this is my other point. Um, this is this is this is what pisses me off because it's not like it's a new thing what we're going through here in the U.S. and okay, and China knows exactly what's going through what we're going through, and it's in their best interest to put out a product that is going to be more adult friendly mm. to uh, hopefully avoid these scenarios where this is something again that will show up. In a court hearing, this is something that will show up in front of Congress. This is something that will be put on PAVE. It will be put on anti-vaping groups, uh, Truth Initiative. These are things that are going to pop. It almost feels like they're just, uh, what is that old saying? Get, you, getting caught with your hand in the cookie jar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's just ridiculous. I, I mean, I'm just, <sighs> look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for trudging forward with the mentality that the ridicule and the slander around vaping is completely unjustified the overreach yeah. by the government is just out of control the yeah. narrative is completely false i'm all for innovation and and fun and stuff like that and if this is something that is interesting to you as a vape device I think by all means, as an adult, you should have the right to go buy something like this. I'm right. I, let me just disclaim it and start it that way. But I think there's a time and place for everything. And if 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 we want to put a good foot forward, I just don't think this makes a lot of reasonable sense when now would be a more prevalent time to maybe make things that aren't as interesting and i say that in an affectionate way like yeah. you know let's let's not let's make it look like more of an adult product so that you know we can say well it's not designed with kids in mind it's yeah. not designed with youth that youth sort of of angle built into it um but not taking away from adults wanting to play i mean shit we're i'm on yeah. my phone half the fucking day sometimes playing some match fucking game or some whatever you know so yeah. i mean i'm i'm not far away from that but anyway i think just keep them separate and uh you know set a good example yeah it's just yeah i mean it just doesn't make sense you know they're honestly they're making money hand over fist in china off of vaping disposables they know they are and just knowing what we are going through and the battle that we're having and it always at the top of the list is children always on the top of the list is children and then you go hey at the board meeting let's put pestris on a disposable right that is going to end up in the garbage can that's going to end up in landfills that's not going to be you know recycled and you know now let's put a big screen on it let's put a game on it ridiculous ridiculous yep no yeah i just i i i, I... I don't know. I just see things like this, and I think this is just not an opportune time to release stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, honestly, and I know, like Tim says, yeah, we. I love games. I, I still play Miss Pac-Man. Every now and then, I have, I have a, a block game that I play. It's similar to Tetris, but it's blocks, and you have to, you know, I love that. It helps me relax, whatever. But I don't need it on my vape device. I, I don't. I, I, I can go grab anything in my house. I can go on the Xbox. I can go on the PlayStation. I can go mm. on my computer. I can mm. go on my phone and play games. Mm. I don't need to have a video game associated with my vaping you know it just makes no sense at all that they that someone at a board meeting said yeah let's put this game on there and yeah i think kids still know what pac-man is i think even kids today 
young kids know what Pac-Man is. Well, I was going to say to that point, I think that retro and the 80s has kind of become sort of a trendy yeah. sort of fad era yeah. right now. And so, you know, I think that, you know, even if kids might not have specifically remembered it, never had an Atari or any yeah. of that kind of stuff, I'm I'm pretty confident that, you know, they get exposed to some of that. I mean, when you think about games like Minecraft or you think about some yeah. of those kind of pixelated, you know, bit yeah. bit level type games, you know, it seems like they're trying to suck people back into that, you know, kind of, uh, you know, what's that street fighter kind of thing, you know, or sort of like one dimensional planer yeah. kind of view. So, you know, I, well, I, I, to me, take a book out. I hate saying this. Take a book out of pharmaceutical companies. If you're a vape industry in China, take a book out. They don't sell patches with fucking SpongeBob on them. They don't sell freaking snoots with fucking uh, you know, I don't can I don't even know He Man on it. They don't they, they don't sell things like that. They don't go, hey, we'll sell more patches if we put He Man on here because we'll attract the '80s kid. They, they don't well, do right, shit like that. Right. It's a professional yeah. level. They understand this is a professional party designed to help people quit smoking the same should apply to this product this is a product that we want people to believe is a product that helps people quit smoking we shouldn't have cartoons on here we shouldn't have any of that and any distributor here in the u.s that is saying heck yeah give me a give me a thousand units of those i'll sell them like that guy needs to i hope their doors shut down I hope they go away forever and I hope they lose their business because they're just shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. Well, it looks like from what we can tell, at least from that particular website is that most of the distribution, if any at all, is probably coming from online. So, you know, I mean, I don't know how many holes and cracks yeah. in the, in the cement there are for kids to get their hands on stuff like that. Will some vape shops probably stock a few up just because yeah. probably, but I think if, if you're a smart vape shop owner and you see that that product's out there, you're probably just going to not put it on your shelves because you just don't want to attract any attention to yourself. And then similarly, uh, with regard to that, um, you know, they were there in a, some of um, some states, uh, they were trying to pass sort of like these common sense kind of like, I think it was yeah. a UK thing. It started in the UK where they said that they're not going to sell any products in their stores that have celebrities on them. They're not yeah. going to sell products in their stores that have any kind of a youthful, you know, kind of angle to them um, just simply to try to establish a reputation of being we sell right. Right. adult based products. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, the wrapper being purple or something like that. But, yeah. you know, we're not going to sell things that, you know, kind of shed a bad light on yeah. uh, on the industry. Yeah, I, I think today's consumer is a little bit smarter than uh, jumping on a brand because a celebrity endorses it. I think that today's consumer is a little bit smarter than that. I think uh, uh, they know they're 95% of the time, but I wouldn't go that high. I wouldn't go that high. I think there's some celebrities that uh, actually take the time to to understand what they're endorsing, and it's an actual product that they use. You know what I'm saying? But I think majority of them is, just, yeah, well, how much? Okay. I got to do how much? Three spots? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it has any value in it or or, or yeah. if it would be worth, worth, worth a shot. I think if I wanted, I get that companies want to put influencers and celebrities behind their products because yeah. they get a lot of uh, likes and views and they have a lot of followers. I would like to see some actual celebrities come out and stand in the fight again for vaping. I, yeah. I, I could care less about whether or not they can help a company sell a few more units. I would actually like to see some of these celebrities who pretty much live these untouchable lives anyway, you know, kind of, you know, advocate on the side of people who, you know, would be influenced by them yeah. and, and make it a double headed sort of effort and say, you know, I want to advocate for this product, you know, for the benefit of adults. Um, and then I think adults similarly, you know, should be able to choose products that they that they're interested in. So yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know that we'll ever say see that, though. Yeah. yeah. And Mallory, I get it. I, yeah. We're not saying, you know, I'm, I do I understand that we all still do love games. I think we're at a point right now where we're losing a battle because of children and, and children seems to be the focus point. And, and we can't help. But when Congress 
reviews anything that we do, these pictures always come to light. And unfortunately, you know, does it, hey, does that product actually help somebody quit vaping or quit smoking? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's a great fucking product. Yeah. You know, maybe it's wonderful. Maybe the flavors are out of, out of this world. But then again, when they showed that picture to those grumpy old fucking men that are in Congress, they look at it like, okay, who's this marketed to? They don't look at it as is this marketed to those the 80s generation kids that are in their late 40s, early 50s. No, they're not looking at it like that way. They're going Pokemon, uh, He-Man, I don't know, Cartoon, SpongeBob, uh, Dora the Explorer, whatever, or fucking Tetris. That to them is triggered to kids. And, and, and unfortunately, that's where we're at. That's where this fight is. And we're, we're, we're not going to win if we keep doing this. We're not. Right. So anyway. Uh, so, Tim, how's your week going, man? You know, it's been busy. You know, it's been it's been crazy. It's been up and down. But I, I want to talk about uh, uh, one of my uh, domestic plights. So, uh, you know, everybody knows that, you know, I, I have an absolute disdain for LED lights. Like, I just will not have anything to do with them at all. Like, you know, if there's ever one in my house. Uh, I'm going to kick myself. Oh, no. Actually, uh, I misspoke. I love LED lights. So yeah. I've been a, a big endorser and a big um, uh, consumer of Nanoleaf products. I think they offer some really cool product lines. Not not for the not for the, the, the person with, you know, shallow pockets. I mean, you're going to spend a little bit of money probably to get mm -hmm. something that's worthwhile. But anyway, so I got this one product called Lines. It was one of their newer products that came out, not the, the overhead light that I got. So I, I was sitting there at my desk one early evening and I heard this pop, 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 pop. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell was that? And I turn around and I look and my lines on the wall are no longer lit up. So I'm like, all right, what's going on? So, I, you know, you start to do the backwards kind of troubleshooting. You think, and it's, you know, it sounded electrical. So I'm pretty much sure something had gone wrong. Anyway, long story short, Get on the Nano Leaf site. I'm still under warranty. I file a ticket to go ahead and what I think is replace the controller unit, which is actually down underneath. And so I they they responded very quickly to that. Like they took care of all my issues. They had me go through the general rigmarole. You know, test this, test this, do this for a reset. Try all these things just to validate that it's not. A user error or user issue that could be fixed. So they finally agreed yeah. to send me a controller. I get the brand new controller. I'm all excited. My nano lease, my nano lines are going to work again. I plug in the new the new controller to go to set it all up. Nothing. Nothing. Dead on <laughs> dead on the wall. Still sitting there dead on the wall. So I'm like, okay, finally. Now now we can eliminate that as being a problematic item. So yeah. it, uh, the next thing is the the PSU or the AC adapter is a separate unit that's a, a, away from the controller. It plugs into it but it, it's separate. It can be separated. I'm like, that surely must be the problem. Something happened with the, with the AC adapter. I need a new one of those. It's been three weeks now. I've been back and <laughs> forth with these knuckleheads <clears throat> in their emails and their ticketing system. You know, they keep asking a question and I give them an answer. And then three days goes by with no answer. And then I keep sending emails like, Hey, what's going on? Any sort of update. And then this one person will answer and go, oh, okay, but do you have this or this? And yeah. then I'll answer the question. Three days goes by and I don't get any answer. Three weeks now, I've been waiting to just get them to ship me a oh, replacement man. PSU. And I'm still not solved. And so, I, you know, for all the nerd heads out there, is, is that reasonable? Do, should it take three weeks to replace a PSU under warranty through a ticketing system? Where is it coming from? Oh, somewhere up north, just probably up in like New Jersey or something. Oh, so it's still in the states. It's being replaced. The product's being replaced within the states. Yeah, it comes oh, right. So from you're not waiting with... for a part to come from China. No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, not... that's too long. That's too. Yeah, long. I'm like, it's just been the most frustrating experience. Like you're supposed to be taking care of your customers. You know, I'm not like arguing with them. I'm not yelling and screaming and demanding you know too much i just want my psu replaced that's it everybody you know? head to this web page yeah or everybody, their Twitter yeah, every, account yeah, everybody put in a, put, put everybody put in a ticket at nano leaf <laughs> and and ask them why how come it takes you forever to answer a ticket actually don't do that 
please don't do that because i have a feeling if you all spam the nano leaf ticketing system my ticket will get further pushed down the queue and i'll be sitting here six months from now with no nano leaf no no so, they need to go to they need to go to the account on twitter and just blast them and say do you know who tim is do you know who tim is and you know how important those lights are to tim yeah I in just, the show just, yeah just 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 curse at the sky and 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 I'll do like what everybody does on Facebook, and I'll just leave a cryptic message that says, "Need prayers, thanks." Oh yeah, with the with the with the person. Yeah, I'm not going to put any context into there. I'm not going to tell you, you know, like you know, I, who knows how serious prayers. or or like maybe maybe you know you're just trying to go get a new driver's license. Need prayers, thanks. Okay, prayers. well, yeah. So I'm just going to leave a cryptic <laughs> message on Facebook and ask for prayers. Yep. But that's it. That's been yeah. My that's week. too long. That is way too long to be waiting for something to come in, especially if it's coming from the United States. I mean, you, you a week, maybe a week and a half. This you know? ticket, this ticket. Well, see, and the thing is, yeah. they already have the backup ticket to go back and yeah. look at to see yeah. that I've already troubleshot the yeah. controller and that the answer is fairly obvious that it's just yeah. a PSU. How hard is it to put in a, a replacement zero dollar order to have the warehouse ship out a PSU? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Maybe it's just come on, Nano Leaf. I'm endorsing you. I'm 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 dumping money into your company. The least you could do is take care of me in a timely fashion. I hope yeah. to God, I yeah. hope to God, Nano Leaf is watching this show right now. Well, yeah, it's because you know Tim. T Tim is going to all his Tim's whole house will be those those neon lights. I, I I'm waiting to see a picture of a neon light in Tim's toilet somehow. The toilet think, will have a neon light in it. <laughs> I had one. I had one. I had one. Somebody got me one as a gift for like uh, like a stocking stuffer for Christmas, and it was this little box uh, with like a with um, that kind of hung over the edge of your toilet, and it had like a little bar that kind of went down underneath the lip edge of the the toilet. And yeah. so it was it was motion activated. So when you <laughs> shut the lid of the toilet, it would go off. But when you would flip the lid up, it would, you know, obviously break the 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 sensor. And then you would have uh, my my toilet would either be like red or purple or green or whatever. And so, yeah, it was it was a good novelty gift until it nice. died. And then I didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. So I'm like, I think I yeah. probably peed on that a couple of times. A couple. Yeah. Hey, hey. You know, with early morning, our aim's not so well. You know how yeah. things are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. if, if, if you want to call it aim, if that's what you want to go with, sure. Yeah. Well, no, I can't. You know, I mean, aim was not the issue, Philip. I think it was. The, I think it was the 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 splashback that may have been the. Uh... I I think we, we... everyone who has ever seen that product advertised in mm -hmm. like it sounds like something you would see in like Delta Sky Miles. Uh, yes, something that's, like that's ridiculous. sort of kind of what it felt like. Yeah, or yeah. At a, everybody at a who has ever been at thirty some odd thousand feet with not a goddamn thing to do thought about getting that. Yeah, yeah. Sky Mall magazine. It was yeah. right in there. Guilty, <laughs> guilty. I mean, I I didn't figure out the one flush and done uh, caveat, but hey, hey <laughs> props to hey, you. I'm going to tell you when I saw it for the first time, I thought this is brilliant. You don't have to turn on the light in the bathroom. No, you it just, don't. It really it is kind of a cool you, thing. Yeah. The sense is your presence in front yeah. of the toilet yeah. and it gives you, it's like landing an airplane. It's yeah. just lighting the runway for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Those who describe the product as brilliant, we're actually flying at 50 to 60,000 feet. No, <laughs> oxygen, that's worth it. And you, you realize how much they paid for that lighted toilet? Quite a bit. Yeah. Hey. Hey, you see the that. things that look like really cool and you have nothing to do for you know 10 hours. You're on your way to the other side of the world and you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, okay, $400 for this. Mm. It's a little putting green that you can use when you're sitting on your regular toilet, non fluorescent. Yeah. Yeah. And it pitches your golf ball right back to you so you don't yeah. actually have to get up. Yeah. And send it. I had one. <laughs> and if you, if you guys want one, you can run off to Amazon right, right now. They're fourteen percent off, twelve dollars and ninety-two cents. Prime one day, you'll get it but, tomorrow. But, but what is it in our wormy brains that believes that leads us to believe that in a sub five hundred dollar price point, this is a reasonable innovation? Yeah, because there's people in this world, Philip, that just have money to burn and they don't care, and they're it, they they they're so their lives are so closed in. 
to yeah. the point where they really don't see what goes on outside their own sphere that sky mall is probably like the most epic source for gifts they've ever seen and they're like you know what this looks really cool like this would yeah. be cool like the wife will get a kick out of this thing i'm gonna order it for 400 bucks when then then you know then he gets home and he surprises yeah. his wife with the the lighted toilet apparatus and then yeah. she then that's when he ends up spending the night on the couch because she's yeah. like you yeah. idiot you can get them on amazon for 13 dollars." <laughs> still uh, in point and i think this is something that tim uh puts out there and in, in really um uh, an outstanding form you're able to convey these things i'm not able to i'm the one sitting there thinking like 501 no 498.99 yeah, yes. Lord, that is a got great me, looking me. piece of machinery. They always have the 99 cents at the end, though. It's like not and 99 cents. <laughs> oh, it's just those silly things where I'll think, well, maybe it's not that overpriced. Maybe it does have a use on this planet or uh nearby planet with similar well, those, it's let's not forget it's us suckers that have insomnia sometimes and we're up at three o'clock in the morning and those infomercials come on, and for we're so tired that we think the product that we're watching is so unique and we have to have it that's when i order the stupidest shit it's like 2 30 in the morning when i'm watching tv and i'm going oh look he cut he cut that orange with that knife with one one stroke that's the i gotta order them you know that's that's the problem do you have the original antelope by tony little what is it called that thing the ginsu knife no the, the guy that was, was workout stuff yeah, oh. the guy, like bionic little guy, like oh. he's about that tall, but could probably kick all three of our asses at once. <laughs> yeah, I, it's called the antelope or the anteater or the reindeer or something. <laughs> Tony little something or other. Do you have one of those, John? <laughs> Why can't I see Phil? I, I don't think so. Anyway, late night, was... late night infomercial binging is different because if yeah. you have Delta Sky Miles, those things expire and that, that hurts. Yeah. At least they used to. So you got to get rid of on them. You know, you have to buy a, a new putter with fluorescence that can yep. be used in, um, you know, intimate. Uh, yeah. yeah, the little beeping sound when you're getting close to the ball, all that stuff. Yeah. Philip, how's your week going? I don't know what comes next, ma'am. It's going <laughs> to, I'll let you know. <laughs> You'll, it's too early to tell. It's Wednesday, Phil. Right? <laughs> you, 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 uh, thank you for those kind words. Uh, I will be on time for our chit chat tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, I have a lot to live up to. But yeah. today, uh, let's just say that what is there's a formal uh, way to say uh, the word for that person who accomplishes a uh, a noteworthy task, someone who learns how to fly a, a plane. Okay. okay. That person might suddenly become, um, uh, might feel wrongly that they have a shot at, um, you know, flying the space shuttle challenger, you know, right then <laughs> and there. There's a the term for this kind of um, magical thinking. And I can't remember the name of it. Anyhow, it's probably something simple. Anyhow, we, we get that superhero sort of, oh, I can do that. Well, yeah. what what isn't possible? Uh, certain dimmers are out of uh, my reach. Let's just, I sh yeah, should have tried it. Not, not with the time I had a lot of. All, all that said, I still don't know how your weekend's going, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to save uh, most of how my week is going for our chat tomorrow because it, it does yeah. uh, relate to who I am, why I am, and yeah. to, you know, a certain extent. I thought you were going to go into Popeye there for a second. I thought you were going to quote Popeye there. Who I am, what I am. I am what I am. Popeye. Come on. I'm not I know I'm old, but I know you should know those words of Popeye. No, no, that 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 stings because I suddenly realized I was pretty close and I don't have any liquor. <laughs> Spinach. That was a long time. Does anyone actually remember? Hey, forget please, this. please don't have a heart attack on the show live. You're grabbing for your chest. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for shirt pockets that might contain drugs. <laughs> no, I actually remember that god awful film, and it was um, 
I want to say I was pretty young. I don't know what year I was. Robin Williams, Shelley Duvall. Oh, Robin Williams one, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that had to be so long ago that most of the people watching this show right now, I mean, literally think we're you know from another planet. The olds have like lost it completely. Yeah. But I, I can't remember who played. Um, yeah, who cares? <laughs> those those three right there are, are, are pretty impressive. And yes, if, if anybody could like make you sit through like a real you know actor you know non you know animated yeah. Popeye feature film, I would yeah. say Robin Williams is the only person who comes close. Yeah, it was er, I think mid eighties when that came on. Timmy, are you ready? Yeah. You know what sure. time it is. Yep, yep. And no music. I got my I got my watch on this time, so I was go. paying attention. I do know what time it is. <laughs> you want me to go? Oh, I don't get my 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 slow Ta-da! jam music. Okay, yeah, there it is. Hey, all you sexy vapors out there, it's time for a little introduction <laughs> time here on the. Hey everybody and welcome to this week's Wednesday night live show edition number I don't know what number we're at I've lost count but I'm sure it's well over 200 by now It feels that way sometimes So let's just see who's here with us in the chat uh, We got the wonderful Mallory Gates Hey 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 all you wonderful THR, uh, THR advocates Mallory right out of the gate first one out so good to see you Mallory how you doing we got Addy Emoji King well I don't know there might be some controversy brewing uh, uh, I read what uh, Pippa said uh, down at the bottom there so I don't know uh, um, that he could be the most expensive Emoji King on the whole entire planet if they start charging him for extra emoji uh, features so you know he already he loads up well so uh, I don't know we could have to start pricing out his commentary uh who else we got in here we got peggy at e6 source thanks for bringing up the whole subject about the uh vape watch or vape disposable vape thing yeah yeah thank you for pointing that one out it's always nice to start with an interesting subject right out of the gate so good to see you peggy how are you we got michael redfern in the house good to see you mr michael how are you sir we got the local yokel pirate james r in the house good to see you james how you been brother uh, who else we got in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm scrolling. I see the there's Steve Tottenham. Good to see you, Mr. Steve Tottenham. How you been, sir? Always great to see you here. Uh, who else? I don't think I'm missing anybody thus far. I'm trying to go slow. I'm going slow. We got Pippus. We got Pippus live here in the, ho- in the house. Uh, getting overcharged for emojis. Uh, and uh, the only cherry that was popped, uh, Pippa was um. John, you missed all the action. Like right out of the gate, we popped this cherry. So he was the first one. So he was the uh, virgin in the crowd. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, we got Sharon Gottschall here. Ohio going to ban flavors. I know this is freaking yeah. horrible. I, and this is exactly why we do this show. Uh, I don't know that, that we alone can turn the tide. I think we turn that tide collectively as a group. Um, but we hate to see our fellow vapors and our brethren have to go through this kind of stuff uh come down to georgia i got some extras so but that's it that's that's who's here we got 21 on the horn so uh you, you got a room to rent you got a room huh? to rent you have I a got, room I got, to rent? I, got, I got a couple rooms i got a couple, <laughs> a couple rooms, rooms in a vape shop down the street but you know <laughs> uh, if, if you're looking for a place to hang your hat in the south tim and i we have you covered yeah, uh, exactly please southern hospitality southern and hospitality. even though i was not able to get any verify good news out of the our advocacy group here in Alabama, the state part of Dixie. Um, there was no verifiable bad news to report. Yeah. 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 So I, 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 I picture the guys over at Casa just like just their heads are just spinning. It's just like everywhere right now. You I, you know, even when I was talking earlier during the show, it's like, where do we focus on? What state? What city? It's, it, it's like, freaking everywhere right now it's almost impossible i feel bad for leaving certain states out that we don't talk about uh but it's just like we can't it's almost impossible to keep up what's going on i mean it's just bam 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 yeah fast and furious and everyone's head sort of spinning everyone's trying to keep up with all the activity and so it's overwhelming and i feel like that is this that's just sort of their latest tactic is you know there's more of us than there are of them you know, in terms of, you know, 
being able to to win or lose so you know they just barrage us and overwhelm us and then you know it's, it's well, some I are gonna say get there's through. more of them than us i think there's more money on their end than there is on us well that that's kind of <laughs> what i meant that, that's kind of what i meant from yeah. from the ability to go ahead and and back these these charges I, it's very difficult for the vape industry to keep pace with that from a monetary perspective there's yeah. just not enough money in the pot to fight all this stuff you know at the level which you know we wished we could fight but you know it we're still there we're still we're still punching and kicking so well, well philip you know the law a little bit better than tim and i but uh <laughs> i mean yeah i I'm, I'm guessing your brother's a lawyer so i'm sure you you know a little bit but i mean what makes it even more difficult is the fact that each state is able to make their own laws and regulations when it comes to vaping. It's like we need that push for something federal to change so we can actually do something on the state local level. Correct? Agree. And also uh, keep in fact this week, one of the most significant things um, in my opinion uh, to come out of uh, our food and drug administration um, in a while, at least statement wise, uh, came out in the last few days. Actually, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Their actual admission that there is a, a continuum of risk among tobacco products, different tobacco products. In addition to that, uh, they gave a few pointers to misinformed healthcare professionals. Ding, 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 ding. Yep. The, the people they that they you know completely screwed up in the first place but this is big on a few levels i i'm i'm terrible with this i'm always the first guy to look at what didn't they um do right i'm always looking at yeah what did they forget but in fact what this 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 can do a lot of a lot of good especially um uh, for the I don't know what percentage of people actually understand the difference between vaping or smoking traditional cigarettes, but let's just say something along the line of 30% as yeah, 30% of, you know, adults and, and perhaps even fewer um, uh, than 30% of all healthcare professionals, doctors mm -hmm. understand the nature of the difference. I mean, you know, quite the, the difference between living and dying. Wouldn't you agree? No, absolutely. I mean, that's really, that's really the, the, the key double line, double underlined element there. But, but I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of misinformed doctors, a lot of uh, naysayer doctors out there. And, and that may be intentional just for the sake of fact that they don't want to put themselves out there to have to deal with the backlash of, of speaking some kind of a truth. But we also have to fight a bit of an uphill battle in that a lot of the misinformation that was able to be spread over the you know la the, let's just say the last five years have got people thinking that vaping is worse than smoking in right. general terms so you know well, we the, now have the food and drug administration courtesy of brian the king yeah on record speaking to doctors healthcare professionals people who are uh who the ones who can help in a position to help who are the most misinformed there this is targeted at them saying hey guess what you may think this about e-cigarettes relative to cigarettes guess what if a person transitions completely they have to say completely it's yeah anyway we have 23 authorized e-cigarette products as reduced risk it's it's a if a smoker who is unwilling to use any of the products we have approved over the last thousand years, toothpicks, what have you, if they are un, unsuccessful using any of those products, these products may greatly, I want to say um, they use terms like, uh, let's just say, uh, greatly reduce their risk for lung disease, heart disease, cancers of that sort if they switch completely. Yeah. from traditional cigarettes to e-cigarettes or vaping products and that's a big deal that's a big deal especially when you have the majority of of you know oncologists out there still you know banging the hey uh, nicotine causes cancer drum it's just we can't have it we are so wrapped up in thinking that the very least of our worries are the things that are going to you know 
end up killing us at the end. It's just we really have got to prioritize, you know, what is most important? What is that which we can get out of the way? And, right. you know, we can worry about, you know, sweet and low and aspartame later, for the love of God, please. Yeah, well, just... I, I just have to wonder, you know, I mean, at what point do people's heads start spinning? Yeah. And then they really start questioning, so what is the actual truth here? So the FDA yeah. and all of these same organizations were quick to jump on the bandwagon years ago and kind of come out and say, oh, you, you people should switch to this. It's 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 safer for you. It's it's it. it, it it's a good thing. And then they go 180 a few years later and go, oh, no, don't touch it with the 10 foot pole. This is the worst thing you could ever get your hands on. It's created an epidemic. We're addicting kids. You know, it's you we might don't be know scared of the American thing. Cancer Society. I don't know if that was the FDA. OK, <laughs> well, I'm yes. I mean, I, I guess I'm just trying to make a point. My point is, is that they were pro vaping when it started. Then right. they became staunchly anti-vaping. And then now we're basically saying, okay, now they're going to come back around and say, oh, well, hey, hold on a minute. It's not that bad anymore. Do you know what I mean? At some point, yeah. the general public is going to be like, I don't know what to believe and who's telling me the truth and what is viable information. I mean, yeah. if you want to relate that to the whole you know, COVID thing you know, and, 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 and how people feel like, after all that had kind of started to subside that they had been lied to for such a long time because they're like, stay in the house, don't go out, wear a mask, you know, be careful, take this vaccination. I, and I'm not, I, I'm not trying to turn it into a political thing. I'm just using a parallel here. No, and it's not political. Like Your points are well taken, but these are, these are, these things are not alike. Like we've talked before, it's very difficult. I know how you feel when it comes to the world health organization, the CDC, you know, to judge their messaging on that particular occasion, that particular event, you know, right. whether it be, you know, Ebola, COVID, whatever, you have got to evaluate, you know, what they're doing um, on every case, uh, on a case by case basis. What I'm having to come to terms with and what's been going on for years now is that I, I have a really bad tendency not to realize just how few people there are in the world who care one uh, tenth of a hundred of a percent as much as I do about this issue. Yeah. Let yeah. us put our bullshit aside for 10 seconds. Say, hey, these 23 e-cigarette products, quote unquote, that you have authorized as appropriate, appropriate for the protection of public health. We can work with this. You know, even if you're... Yeah. Your messaging is you know, too little, too late. We can work with this. Apply that to all the different ways in which these doctors didn't know. Well, now they know. It's it's the, yeah. it's the first, I think, you know, two page yeah. kind of flyer informational um, uh, piece that Brian King co-authored with a couple of people, and it has to do with when all else fails, these people who can't quit smoking, their lives could be saved by switching completely to e-cigarettes. Right. And this is important messaging. And this is the sort of thing that puts them in, in, in the right place to do. Let's say, let's say they don't ever um, make another step in the right direction, you know, toward, you know, seeing the bigger picture of tobacco harm reduction. This is a pretty big step that we can do a lot with. But yeah. we do have to be a bit more patient, and I am the least patient guy out there. Uh, and I'm having to say this. We've got to stop thinking that your average person who is just like us in the doctor's office, uh, we might be, um, we might have so much in common. Let's just say that I doubt we're as into the whole tobacco harm reduction thing. Yeah. I mean, I run into people every day that could care less. They're like, dude, I don't care what you do with your body. And there are a lot of people out there. You want to smoke? Smoke. I haven't. I think you know, a lot of people could care less because of the way yeah. that we've been approaching it. We've been yelling yeah. and screaming yeah. and madder and hell and rightfully yeah. so. But that's, yeah. you don't know, win friends and, you know, yeah, you know, uh, win friends and influence people that way. So what I'm yeah. trying to say is, uh, myself more than anyone I need to take a step back, see this for the positive, uh, you know, the progress that it is, and maybe start uh, looking through the people who I'm talking at, you know, looking through their eyes and seeing what a, yeah, how I'm coming across because this is a big deal. If you know the right, you know, physicians who haven't thought a thing about e-cigarettes, they only know to say, 
uh, that's just as bad as the next thing. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, now they can't very well look away from it. This is something targeted at you know doctors yeah. and uh, doctor assistants and practitioners and everyone that 70 percent that doesn't either doesn't care or doesn't know to care right well this is the beginning of maybe a different outlook yeah. I uh, certainly i certainly hope so i mean i think I, it's, it's due it, we, we've long past reached due time for them to start passing proper messaging and not just riding the coattails of this you know fear factory that was generated over the youth you know and but but somehow dovetailing that into you know it's this horrible thing that's detrimental to your health as opposed to being a something that's for the betterment of your continued survival and walking away from cigarettes i mean yeah. we're long past the moment when they should have been doing that already and yeah. not spending so many years damaging oh it also gives like cowardly people who know better the courage to actually speak yeah. up well the fda spoke up yeah. well now i can be someone who knows something do, do you think we're too far along to actually have uh, i'm gonna throw i live in fantasy world sometimes people but do you think it's too far into this now to have actually have a outside source come in with no ties to vaping, no ties to the government, no ties to pharmaceutical, no ties to big tobacco, and actually do the investigation for the general public. Is that too, are we too gone for that? To actually do the studies, to actually do the testing, just an outside source. And that is going to be whatever is fed to the people, which probably won't happen. That's why I said I live in a in a fantasy world. But are we too far along for something like that to happen? Someone step in and say, we're an independent company, independent lab, whatever, have no ties to nobody. But we're going to go ahead and test vaping for the next year and a half. And we will give you our 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 study. We'll give you whatever comes out of it and you will have to accept it. I, I don't think I don't think that opportunity has been lost, but I think if you're going to do that, I think that whoever this uh, neutral party is that, you know, doesn't have any influence from big pharma, big tobacco, the government funded by Altria, funded by, you know, anybody on either side of, of the thing. If they if, if they can get the grant to do some independent studies, what I would like to see is I would like every component of that testing regimen to be completely transparent so that it can yeah. be looked at objectively. Because I think one of the things that we have been subjected to, or at least kind of yeah. we end up having to do is when all of these, these, these anti-vaping negative uh, papers are published in medical journals and so on and so forth, is that we, we in inevitably immediately rush to the research side of things to go, how do they test this stuff? Like, what was the apparatus? What was the control subject? How were they doing? Was it just mice and they were just forcing vapor down their faces? Was it a controlled uh, test group that had s some experience with vaping? Because the one thing that I have not seen, or at least not seen from a testing perspective is, because they've used legitimate subjects before, they've used humans, but they've never addressed the whole idea that not everyone vapes exactly the same. Yep. You know what I mean? Right, there's the, exactly. there's the, there's the DTL people. There's the MTL people. There's the pod people. There are the people that are on 12. There are the people that are on 24. There are the people that are on 50. There are the people that are on three. And there's people that vape at 20 watts, 30 watts, 40 watts, 50. And, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is there's yeah. so many. So, variables. Somebody tried to accuse me of being a mouth to lung uh, only kind of vapor last week. I can't, I can't see Philip taking a huge 70 watt pull of something last week. The hell is well, you? Prove them wrong, Philip. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. What I'm going to say is we have got to stop being so incredibly niche. Um, just in, I mean, so um, uniquely uh, blind to how. I, I mean, let's just say in, in the world of of you know people who want to do the right thing, we are we assume knowledge where there is none. We have we've got to stop thinking. For example, why introduce the world to Stanton Glantz if the majority of it has forgotten he ever existed? Right. Why bother mentioning pavers if the only reason anyone would ever remember who Meredith Berkman is is because she tried to 
sued the state of New York, I don't know, for, I don't know, producing some kind of junk food that she couldn't stop eating because her fat ass lacks every kind of power, willpower, staying power. I don't know. Judgment, good, bad. Other. Yeah, she's a horrible human being. Let's right. just say that why would we want to talk about these people who perhaps nobody has thought to think about or care about? People out there who really haven't had a chance to, to weigh in yeah. on this entire discussion to you know, over the last 48 hours, perhaps, you know, many of the people who are most likely to carry the loudest bullhorn are more, more at this point, more likely to weigh in than ever before, just because the FDA has finally said, Hey, doctors with 20 million in liability malpractice insurance, guess what? You can tell your patients this. Yeah. It's a, that's a pretty big, um, yeah. That's, yeah, no, that's, let's just uh, say that this is, um, yeah, no uncertain terms. It's like giving them that go ahead, maybe what they had always, um, supposed thought may be the case until the FDA comes out and says it, they're yeah. going to avoid it like the plague, because let's just say it. I mean, I, I can you blame any specialist out there who is, uh, you know, not necessarily making uh, like even average for, you know, a specialist, let's say it's not a surgeon, but has to pay um, at least as much in malpractice insurance premiums because that's just, you know, their specialty they don't need any more problems than they already have. And they do something because they love that particular specialty of medicine. They just happen to be gifted in that area. So when the FDA, instead of, you know, continuing to tell them how we just don't know, we do finally know that these things, even if they are the last thing that we would uh, prefer, we would prefer that you, you know, give them this advice as a last resort but if they can't quit using anything else recommend they try e-cigarettes and if they completely right. switch then that massively reduces their uh lifetime you know health risks and that is that's i would say that i hope that we handle this uh with a certain amount of care and go into it thinking and and not be like told you so all along yeah we've been looking at this for a long time now it's time for us to talk to with open arms some of the people who haven't even thought to begin right with. because if if anybody's going to be trusted first it's going to be your doctor right it's i mean if, you know yeah i mean like the, the those are the people that you look to to basically guide you down the path of more of a more healthy prosperous life and 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 get you away from the things that cause the greatest yeah. harm so i do agree that this is a swing in a positive direction uh and i do hope that more doctors take the opportunity to start speaking up and speaking positively up it about it and getting people to start considering that but the, here comes the challenge right so almost simultaneously as this is going on then we have to fight all these other battles where you've got mm -hmm. the local state governments trying to basically take it away and and prevent accessibility to it so you now you got maybe you got some doctors in the state who are now going to start endorsing it, but I get it. They're going to endorse the 23 products that were right. effectively First. FDA uh, uh, approved. I'm just saying to me, it's, it's bigger than that because I think that even with these 23 products that they, they allowed to get back out on the market, maybe at an initial stage, it might be something that someone tries and they go, Hey, you know, this is, hey. I'm doing this to help, help myself quit smoking. But we all know way too much, and we know that that person, because there's you still enter into that a large element of risk that these people just won't enjoy that product. Yeah. They just that that's up there. There are two points of risk. Physicians looking at the FDA's <laughs> lukewarm is a really really pro uh, tobacco harm reduction way to put it. Looking at the FDA's lukewarm stance, their reluctance to say with any conviction that e-cigarettes are demonstrably safer than cigarettes. Now, they might have said it at conferences. Yeah. Brian King may have said it in an interview, but he's never put it down uh, in a you know two-page report aimed at healthcare professionals mm. to pass along to their patients. Right. Yeah. Now, this does two things. It puts it down once and for all 
the this uh frankly in my opinion uh does a great deal more than you know imagine that all the vape shops over the years you know had the opportunity to tell their clients hey we know we can't say how much safer this is than combustible tape but we do know it's quite a bit less risky uh, now I the always FDA wonder has put it down and now uh doctors who were in the, on the fence prior and you can't I don't think yeah. I'm hoping it's a lot because you really can't blame a lot of these people for, you know, tiptoeing around the subject unless they have to, bre you know, breach that topic because of yeah. liability. Yeah. Because, I always I wonder mean, how I mean, they talk to themselves, you know, peer to peer, doctor to doctor. I always wonder how they discussed vaping amongst themselves in private. I, I always wonder that, you know, because you got to oh, have oh, my GP. Uh, yeah. You know what his his favorite way to go about it is is just still not smoking. It's that's that's his uh, vernacular for still vaping. I say yeah. yes, absolutely. So here's what uh, he, Doctor Goner, and millions out there, well, millions, you know, thousands just like him across the country who were very interested in speaking up yeah. about this option to a lot of their patients, but really just don't know if it's worth the potential blowback they have it right there it's almost like yeah, yeah. a permission slip from our our government uh saying hey if yeah. you want to make this recommendation go ahead and by the way you're for the most part protected now because we said it first now you can say it. yeah yeah you know, please tell it, them it, the it's sad order. because it's they're waiting for yeah it's sad because they're waiting for some congressman who's not a doctor who who's never done a lab test who uh, an fda guy that has never done a lab test or, or has been a doctor to make a decision that a doctor and, that's and who teased cares every that day. Yeah, yeah. This is the, day. this is the second in command of the U.S. FDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the guy that decides what yeah, yeah. Um, gets authorized and what yeah, doesn't. He's yeah, saying yeah. that this, if a smoker yeah. transitions completely uh, yeah. to nicotine vaping, regardless if it's the twenty-three, I mean, hundreds of equivalent products there are that have yet to be um, yeah. evaluated or were you know denied. The point is this: they've yeah. said this is an avenue people who want to quit smoking can take and we support this yeah. now you can say this and feel good about it too and let's face it um you know, litigious um you know healthcare uh, is is it's a way of life for a lot of these people and let's just say if um yeah i think some of these people need a little push a little reassurance that they're not going to get their asses sued off well, yeah, for whatever have to might be. come they have to see it. I mean, I see it. I drive by the hospital every day on my way to work. And all I see in at the hospital, we talked about this before, but th here in California, you have to go off property. So you have to go to the sidewalk to smoke. If you work there or you're just a patient there, you have to walk to the sidewalk and stand by the bus station. And if you look, it's all nurses in their you know they're nurses because they're wearing that those scrubs and they're out there and they're most all most vaping. passionate physicians are dying to help uh yeah. their their most at-risk patients their most vulnerable patients the ones that are older and still smoking yeah. and yeah. they may be you know right on the cusp of becoming extremely ill and they want Hey, here's where that magic bullet might exist. Yeah. That well, person too, who's know, going to be right. developing yeah. all kinds of problems in the near future and smoking is going to exacerbate the living yeah. hell out of yeah. all these problems. Yeah. Here's what you do. You go ahead and say all these other things. You've tried these things over the years. You're still smoking. Do me a favor. I have this here. Enjoy Ace with 5% rich tobacco, which is a lot better than the classic tobacco. It's not good, but it is what it is. Yeah. Right. Try it. Yeah, it's not going to taste like your, but it's going to give you that hand to mouth, that that ritual. It's going to replace that ritual. Replace this with your yeah. cigarette. Yep. Um, it's going to cost you a fraction of the amount, no matter even if you're smoking two packs a day. Yeah. These are available. These have been approved by our federal, approved, authorized by our federal authorized, government authorized. <laughs> as a uh, a far safer um, tobacco product. You know, mention the continuum of risk do it because yeah. frankly hey if i'm a doctor i say frankly you know we've tried all these things over you know the many years you've been coming so if you can't do this yeah. philip kirschberg did this if you can't do it well then you're down you know, you're downright lazy yep <laughs>
you're just, you fill you're up the, almost you, one entire You're the poster the child on the inside of the door yeah. when you're in the little room. Yeah. That, that, Phil, Phil almost went Nike look, there. Look at that Let's poster. Look, look at this man right here on this poster. If, if, if he could do it, then you can do it. I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you right now. I could see, I could you know, see that, uh, Phillips, uh, poster. Have him so you standing. guys hang out on Facebook <laughs> and met up. Abs, I haven't seen Instagram in a decade. What's going on? Oh, I can see that. Hey, Timmy, uh, yeah. article number one, I sent it to you there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, hold on one second. I, I actually had uh, saved a couple before the show cool. as well. But we'll as they say, uh, cool beans. Oh, the, the, the first one in the list there. Yes, the, sir. Oh, okay. So we're going to talk about. Hold on. Hold on one second. I opened up a tab where I didn't want to open a tab. Let me move this tab over to this side of the world. And then let's mm -hmm. present. Let's share screen. Da, da, let's da, da, da. go to here. Let's do this 45th button click. And I think that will share the article. All right. It Give sure me. did. Una momento, por favor. Are you going to do this article in Spanish since it is talking about Spain? <laughs> no. 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 See? No. 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 I challenge, okay. I challenge you to change the uh, the format on the article in Spanish and go for it. <laughs> I, I probably could do it. I, I I'm a pretty good reader of. Did that uh, Greek the... bastard get to you guys? Really, seriously? Actually, what? <laughs> Actually, I think Tim, you have one of these too. What? The Lux XR Max. Uh, no, I don't have the Lux Max. I have the previous version, which is just the Lux. Deluxe. I've never taken it above 55 watts. It's it's truly noteworthy. I mean, yes, it's really I can't noteworthy. adjust the wattage or anything on mine. Mine is basically just plug and play. They had two coils. They had yeah. a 0.08 and I think a 0.03. I think those were the two coils the that they had for that. All right. So you could either go MT, you know, MTL or DTL, well, restricted uh, DTL. Um, but, but you have to have the direct lung pod to use the restricted direct lung coils. No, same, same pod. You can put whatever coils you want in it. It just allowed you to go one direction or the other. It's just the pod was exactly the same. Didn't That's change. awesome because this one does 80 watts, but you have to buy a different pod for anything uh, higher than 0.3 to 0.4. You have to buy a mouth to lung pod and yeah, vice versa. Maddie. Anyway. Yeah, no, no. In the chat. look who's in the yeah, chat. Look, there's old, there's old Maddie, Maddie Jarvis in the chat. Good to see you, Maddie. How you been? Hope life is treating you well. Madison, yes, we, we uh, miss your cannabis show. We miss exactly. Maddie's cannabis yeah. show. Yeah, we yeah. learned everything about uh, THC and Delta. This DVD. And, yeah, now I got a cabinet full of it. No, um, <laughs> see. It got 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 me going in the right direction. Anyway, that's that's not the point. I I, I was, I just, <laughs> I, I I could I could read very well in Spanish. I just I could not. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't do consume it. it to the level as to where I could speak it fluently. Yeah. But f for the benefit of all all of the people in the chat tonight, we're going to read this in English because uh, I, I I think we would just kind of get them confused trying to read in Spanish. All right. So uh, this article uh, in and of itself, this is talking about, uh, let me scroll back up. I'm, I'm using a, a track trackpad right now. So hold on. I think I have enough mice, a mouse to keep going. All right. I think we're good now. Uh, Spain launches a flavor ban consultation. Ooh. No, they want to talk about it first. They want to talk to somebody who's going to tell them what they should do. They're going to they're going to get a consultation. So the Spanish government plans to prohibit flavored vaping products as part of a, of sweeping changes to the country's tobacco control laws included in the Comprehensive Tobacco Prevention Plan 2024 to 2027. I can tell you that there are a lot of vape advocates and a lot of uh vapers in Spain. So this is a big deal if they're going to start taking this this particular uh path uh announced last week the plan which will be presented at legislation soon will also include plain packaging new taxes on tobacco products and added restrictions on public use okay well those particular components alone i don't see those as being presidingly problematic uh i mean taxes i mean yeah nobody wants to pay more for something 
But I mean, if you're going to install uh, restrictions in public, okay, that's a small sacrifice. So you can only do it here. You can't do it inside there. Okay, fine. We can adapt to things like that fairly easily. And plain packaging. Okay, I'm, I'll am i endorse plain packaging. As long yeah. as I know what the product basically is that I'm getting on, on that plain right. package bottle, I'm not going to cry over spilt milk or something like that. Um, but anyway, Spain is an influential European Union member state with over 47 million residents. It is the fourth most populous EU country after Germany, and it fits into the st uh, state of Texas, folks. That kind yeah. of that gives you an idea of the general area, surface area of Spain or the country itself. It fits into the U.S. state of Texas. Yeah. Uh, after Germany, France, and Italy, it also it's also the bloc's fourth largest economy. Adoption of flavor restrictions by Spain would dangerously influence the direction of EU flavored vape policy, which we will be part of the updated tobacco products directive, the TPD. We're already familiar with the TPD yeah. restrictions on tank sizes and things like that. Like, you know, us U.S. customers, we get the 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 uh, the RTA in and then we go find that rubber grommet in there and we yank that sucker right out. Take that turn it from a two to a five in about three seconds. Um, anyway, the consultation ends April 23rd, which ironically is just about a week away. Yeah. The Ministry of Health has launched a very time limited consultation. It was 15 days in totality to gather public opinion on parts of the plan, including the flavor ban. From my U.S. location, I was only able to see the uh, this is Jim McDonald. Everyone, yeah. everyone got to meet Jim when he was on the show a while back. I was only able to see the health ministry's website using a VPN where I found the press release announcing the consultation, which reproduced most of the, of the information found in the official consultation document, which I saw elsewhere and have no way to link to in both Spanish and English comments are sent by email to blah, 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 dot G O B dot E S <laughs> comments on the consultation will only be accepted until April 23rd. So if you watch our show and you live in Spain, Yep. Jump on, on this. Uh, get on this. It's crucial that Spanish vaping and harm reduction advocates spread the word quickly. It's clear the health ministry is hoping to reduce participation by providing such a brief reply period. Uh, the document itself is vague. The listed objective of the proposed amendment to the Royal Decree on Tobacco is to introduce a number of measures and lists. Here we go. Here, here's the where the rubber meets the road. Improve, improvements in the labeling and pack. Is that spelled correctly? Labeling. Is it two L's? -B -E -L -L -I -N -G. I don't know. I uh, I thought it was one L, but you know what? Both may be accepted. Uh, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Uh, improvements. Jim, we in apologize, Jim. We apologize. Sorry, Jim. Not trying to. Not trying to overstep or become your copy editor. I just, you know, that red flag went off. I just had to question it for a minute. Improvements in the labeling and patching, pack patching the packaging of tobacco products through the introduction of plain packaging okay i'm down with that i can live with that people still get the products i Improve just want to see i want to see the flavor though i want to know what flavor i'm buying right right <laughs> right i mean i mean i that's what i said you can yeah. introduce plain packaging i just want to know what's in the bottle yeah you know I, I i you you can even walk away from some of the fancier flavor names like if you want to try to make it unique and cutesy wootsy i mean okay fine let's just yeah. put it in plain plain spanish <laughs> On the side of the label, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, whatever. Oranjo, orange. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> improvements in the proper labeling of emerging tobacco and tobacco related products and prohibition of additives and flavoring components in tobacco and related products which distort the objectives of the health regulation or which may be more appealing to consumers. So what does that really mean? Prohib prohibition of additives and flavoring components in tobacco and related products mm. which so it does sound like a flavor ban it does yeah yeah so this sounds like hey we're gonna let you have tobacco flavored stuff which is flavored yeah. but the moment somebody puts blueberry in there ah, ah you can't put you can't make it appealing you can't make it interesting whatsoever so no blueberry yeah. for you no blueberry for you I don't know. Is blueberries popular in Spain? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, I'm not really. I mean, there's. I mean, I think they enjoy many of the same delicacies that we enjoy. So I would have to imagine know, that you know, know, out, you know, know. Out, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, yeah, sure. Why not? They love blueberry in Spain. Uh, so Spain needs flavored vapes. We all 
need flavored vapes. This is yes. not just Spain. We all need them. We've all seen the success. Spain has more than half a million vapors, according to Knowledge Action Changes, recently updated global state of harm reduction report. That's just 1.3% of the adult population, a relatively low percentage. Uh, to me, that's a lot of people. 1.3, yeah. I mean, what is it? Half a million, so 500,000. Uh, you know, well, uh, you know, that may be true. I, I can't tell you when I was over there uh, that I saw hand over fist people vaping, uh, but it was prevalent. You could see it in the shops as you walked around. All kind. Remember those old school kind of vape shops that you used yeah. to see like at the mall and the kiosk where it was nothing but ego twist pens on a wall, you know, different colors. And then they'd have like the blinged out ones for the ladies that had like yeah. a bunch of little sequins and stuff all over. Yeah, it's kind of like I saw a bunch of those. Um, you know, all I, all I can ever hope for is that um, vaping, um, uh, nicotine vaping becomes as chic and as popular uh, as cigarette smoking was in France in the uh, 50s and 60s and 70s. Um, now, I mean, let's just say that I, I don't mind looking like a dork and, and living forever. Aha, Shane, you know, okay. <laughs> tricks on you. But <laughs> quick, quick question. <laughs> the vaping is good for you. Do you, is there a chance that uh, a lot of Spanish vapors have no idea what's coming their way? You know, it's a good question. Um, yeah. I, I, there was a guy, uh, this guy that I was friends with on Facebook. I believe I still am. His name was Fran, and he was actually very much into vaping. He actually owned a, a shop, and he had his own thing rolling, and it was more it more likened to what we saw here where he had all kinds of mods and RTAs and RDAs. Like he had classic real deal stuff, not that boutique kind of chic kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, he put a big focus on it for quite some time, but I don't know. I think he may have dialed that back maybe just because, you know, he like the most, of- the most prolific, um, vaping markets in the EU, in, including the UK, they they always strike me as maybe a little bit more evolved, a little more mature than you know what we have here in the United States, where it's either um, it's ten feet tall and glows in the dark, or you know it's some tobacco. You know, it, we're having a hard time with identity here. And on, and while we're talking about NPR, just the other day, I uh, while they were being ripped to shreds, their credibility literally ripped to shreds by. Uh, one of the oldest reporters, um, you know, the guy, guy that practically helped um, establish a name for National Public Radio. Um, in, in a 20-second blurb, they talked about in Colorado how half the teens at a given party, according to teens, they might not bring their own vape, but they're seen vaping. And I thought to myself, what's the difference between this and kids that were smoking bumming a cigarette from the main smokers pack 25 years ago in high school, other than it being newsworthy. Yeah. I mean, I just, I couldn't come up with anything. It's just kids um, letting full grown uh, adult reporters know that they're vaping. They might not know know who brought the vape, the illicit item to the party along with, Coke, meth, alcohol, whatever, all these other, you know, you know, harmless, you know, <laughs> toxins. But let's harmless. just say that the, yeah, yeah, all these other products that you know they're for adults, but they're okay. They're okay. Hey man, all things in moderation. The only difference between that party today and 25 years ago is 25 years ago it wasn't news, and we are all happily smoking cigarettes because we were prepared to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was checking today, the new. smoking rates. I was checking the smoking rates in Spain, and it's eighteen point four percent is what their smoking rate is. And there. I think NPR is going to have a much harder time ignoring that little tidbit about how doctors should start recommending e-cigarettes to people who simply cannot quit using other methods. Right. Uh, so, so to uh, James's question. I know that I know that uh, certain berries, there's there's a family, the, the family of berries like blackberries, blueberries, boysenberries, raspberries, all, all that falls under one sort of categorized name. Like they don't distinguish between those. They just fall under a berry category. I don't remember that word, but for your benefit, I did look up what what the name of blueberries are in Spain. And and those are called 
uh, arandanos, arandanos, and the only other one I remember was ubas, uba, which was grapes. So uh, I don't know if that helps answer the question, uh, but uh, I I get what you're saying that you know the, aren't Spanish blueberries what we call olives? Uh, I I think that they still distinguish olives over there. Um, I do think that that that's a unique uh, and is is an olive a fruit? It doesn't have a pit, right? So it, it olives. Must, what is, do olives have a pit? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So they're a yeah. fruit. Okay. So an olive is a fruit. Anyway, well, back to the article. Pitted. Back to the article. Sorry, I'm getting off track here. Uh, that's just 1.3 percent of the adult population, a relatively low percentage, only about one quarter of France's vaping rate. Uh, however, Spain's smoking rate is fairly high. This is true. A lot of people smoke in Spain. Uh, with almost 28 percent of the adult population, more than 11 million people using cigarettes. More than 57,000 people in Spain die from smoking-related disease annually, which is interesting to me yeah. because if it was a widely available and a product that people could use, why did not more people transition to vaping in Spain? So it must just not be taking hold in right. the same sort of fervor that it kind of took hold here in the States. So Spain needs flavored vaping products, which are generally more effective as a switching tool for smokers. Most adult vapors who have stopped smoking completely prefer non-tobacco flavors, which is true. true. Eight European countries have passed laws prohibiting vape flavors. So Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Hungary, Lithuania, the Netherlands, Slovenia, and Ukraine, among that group, are all, all are EU members except Ukraine. No European European country has passed an outright vape ban. Uh, so, yeah, uh, something to pay attention to. Another country under the scrutiny of uh, some significant regulation, including what appears to be a, a, a flavor ban in general. So, um, not good. I hope the I hope the I hope there's enough people in spain to stand up for this and and hopefully that they'll be heard more legitimately than the ignorance that we're shown here in the states so yeah not good yeah hopefully people show up for this i i don't know if there's going to be an open form for it as well or if it's all just written it doesn't really go into detail exactly how they're going about taking in information from the general public so well, usually the whole push to limit adult access to flavor vaping products uh, coincides with some sort of youth uptake crisis, which I'm not seeing here. Uh, well, you know, fact, it, the it, adult it, uptake it, crisis, we're missing that too. Right. Which, but I think we need to be a little realistic here too, in the sense that I don't know how, what they view as a particular uh, issue. I mean, kids in Spain, I think at 18 can go out and legally drink. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, <clears throat> but this, this seems like a fairly quiet, um, mandate being pushed by the Spanish government and with a very, uh, the few, um, relatively few vapors, uh, in Spain, it seems like yeah. they're doing this as like some sort of preemptive move just in case it becomes a problem. This is, it's kind of weird like that, is it? Not yeah, I mean, high. I don't know. It just, you know, my experience of actually having been there a couple times and just sort of seeing general lifestyle and, and things like that, it's 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 a little bit more convoluted than what we're used to seeing, you know. And then, you know, you're sitting, their lifestyles and their habits are completely different. I mean, they don't even go out at night until like, like for them, they don't go out until like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Like the club doesn't really get hopping until like 11 o'clock and then you get out of the club at like three in the morning and people are just partying on the street and people are walking by with coolers on skateboards and selling you beer and water and yeah. so i, I mean it's fortunate enough like, to see a thing in barcelona once but knowing all that you do about mm. you know spanish culture what what do you think of this almost i don't know clandestine move by the spanish government uh, in lieu of any real tangible crisis or vaping uptake by youth why would they be doing this well uh, well uh, well that's the thing just basically reading the information that they want to set forth in terms of the policies that they want to adopt uh, i gotta believe that underneath the are surface, they following the, suit uh, that's how i feel i sort of feel like like without saying the 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 dirty words it's mm -hmm. like everything that they're doing is exactly the same kind of thing that they're doing just about everywhere else uh, in, in the name of, of under the, the on the backs of children. 
they like they they're they're recognizing that they've got a youth issue so let's make it this pretty much androgynous unappealing looking thing you know so that we can keep the kids away from it because they won't find it interesting at that point but we can still offer something to adults in that same breath is germany still this is the strangest thing ever germany is um spearheading new and progressive uh cannabis legislation and yep. uh shutting down you know safer alternatives to cigarettes it's hard to who would have thought it but um from what i understand uh germany has quite a bit of um their thoughts on you know the direction of the eu is those thoughts germany being at the forefront would you say that uh any one of these nations germany denmark netherlands i mean these are all i mean the Netherlands, for example, is Spain have any interest in in mimicking uh, uh, the vape policy of the Netherlands? I don't know. I don't. I mean, and it could it could be just something to sort of uh, normalize, uh, not normalize, but just kind of consistently shape the, shape the policies throughout the European Union. You know, from country because like in it, over there, dude, you can just get on a friggin' train or a bus and just go to another country within another three country. hours yeah but spain is huge with a lot of different flavors a lot i mean i mean everything like from okay um places like madrid to barcelona you know how it is everything the people the everything the time they go out and do things during the day everything about the way you can approach people in those two different cities all over spain it's like different right. countries in each city that you travel yeah. to and for for this to be going on uh, with very little, um, let's just say, uh, as we pointed out earlier, you know, relative to France and the UK, of course, uh, you know, the number of people who vape in Spain are, are very few in the number of smokers. Uh, are, yeah, there's a, what, almost 30% of males of a certain age in Spain smoke cigarettes. Yeah. That's a that's a lot of people smoking and for that few people to even know that vaping is a viable alternative in spain is kind of surprising to me but what's even more surprising is the government's making very definitive moves on clamping down on this industry without a whole lot of reason to be clamping down on industry and without much of an industry in space so i'm wondering whose cues they're taking that's all yeah because it seems I like it would have to be you want to do uh, the second article quick? Tim, yeah, or? I got. I already got it up. I'm already ready I'm to rock please. and roll. Yes, sir. I'm ready to go. I, I I don't know. Difficult one to say, Philip. I'm not. I'm not sure. I I I wish I knew more from my friends over there in Spain about what they're experiencing and why these things are going on. But it just looks to me like from watching the TV, Spain's got plenty of problems right now. So yeah, they do. Yeah. So. With that yes. said, uh, this just seems like another thing. All right, it's lost. Uh, and, and Sp Spain and Italy, they love to smoke. They love to yeah, smoke. Yeah, well, that's why I said, like, there's that just, I found smoking to be a very common sort of social activity. There's a lot of smokers uh, in Spain. and But why more people didn't jump on the... Um, on the bandwagon, and, and I have to agree with Michelle Elliott on this one, a WHO. I, I feel like they're sort of taking the lead from SCTC and the WHO, and they're just sort of like lumped into that pile. Uh, who's who's laying out health recommendations and guidelines based on their narrative that they're trying to push? And so I think when you're in that body of people who are associated to that grouping, I think that, you know, they tend to just let that stuff roll over so anyway we'll, we'll kind of wait to see how that goes obviously uh there's no decision made yet but uh we know what they're trying to do so this is a lawsuit uh challenge lawsuit challenges kentucky pmta registry law go kentucky challenge that ruling uh, a group of vape and hemp businesses has filed a lawsuit in a state court challenging kentucky's recently passed pmta registry law the law is set to take effect January 1st, 2025, and will make it illegal to sell most vaping products that have not either received marketing authorization from the FDA, still be under review by the agency, or are currently under appeal to the FDA or a court. So at least there'll be some other things available 
uh post january 1 2025 if they fall under those three categories the lawsuit uh was filed on april 12th in franklin Cir circuit court by four vaping companies along with the kentucky smoke free association and the kentucky hemp association they are asking the court to declare the registry law unconstitutional and to provide temporary and permanent injunctive relief that prevents the state from enforcing the law i imagine this is the same kind of thing that's going to take place everywhere else these things snuck yeah. through the petitioners charge the law violates the kentucky constitution by applying to more than one subject and that the definition of vapor products in the law would also apply now to currently legal hemp-based vaping products and marijuana vaping products that are not under the fda's regulatory purview does the fda have any uh, marijuana and hemp-based products that are under the fda's regulatory purview as far as I know, zero nicotine, uh, e-liquids, and CBD um, vaping products, there is no uh, pathway to legitimacy or regulation. Right. Vaping products that contain no nicotine, like zero nicotine vapes or nicotine analog products, CBD vapes, and other hemp-based can cannabinoid vaping products do not fall under the FDA. That kind of feels like a word you hear being used in like the Star Wars trilogies, you know? <laughs> This is not the ca cannabinoid that you're looking this for. This is not the cannabinoids you're this looking is... for. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I lost my place. Uh, so that they're so they're unable to apply for for or receive authorization yeah. through the pre-market tobacco application pathway. That makes them unable to qualify as legal products under Kentucky's PMTA registry law. Quote and unquote, unless. The hemp Unless. or marijuana manufacturers are making a therapeutic claim. That is, they're intended to cure, treat, mitigate disease. They're not subject to an FDA regulatory process. Attorney Greg Troutman told the Kentucky Lantern. Hey, our good friend Greg Troutman. Go Greg. Go Greg. So how can Go you condition market approval in Kentucky upon complying with a non-existent process? Process. Troutman uh, represents the Kentucky Smoke Free Association and the other petitioners the in the state. You. He has represented other vaping industry businesses and multiple legal actions. The bill that created the Kentucky PMT registry law passed both house houses of the state general assembly on March 28th. Governor Andy Bashir signed house bill 11 into law on April 5th. Numerous other states have passed or are currently considering similar PMTA registry laws, which have been created and lobbied for by big tobacco companies, especially Marlboro manufacturer, all tree group. Mm -hmm. boo on you bt boo. and and yet they want to call us all part of big tobacco yeah i don't know if this has happened in other states alabama is sure to be the one and only that this is taking place in but our um early in the stages uh registry bill passed and uh it contained uh accidental coincidental provisions that would eventually outlaw cbd products um right. i guess what you would call homeopathic products remedies mm -hmm. that were you know perfectly um fine no hurting, not hurting anybody under the law next thing you know just by virtue of um over yeah uh, i just say really really overzealous uh you know pro uh you know tobacco company legislation being pushed here in this part of the world they managed to ban those too, even though there's no way that they could ever yeah. hope to become legal. <laughs> there's, there's actually no means by which they can become regulated. So yeah. that's kind of silly. Um, the other thing I would love to know is I've, I've been thinking a lot recently about these dumb idiotic laws. Remember when uh, a very anti uh, marijuana uh, state house in Minnesota accidentally said, yes, we would love to uh, create a, a medicinal marijuana initiative in the state of Minnesota. And they literally checked yes instead of no. It was like that big yeah. or that little of a thing. And as soon as they filed it and it became law, they immediately, I want to say it was uh, Minnesota State Republicans, immediately wanted back. No, can we have that back? We, we checked the wrong box. And, of course, state Democrats who were behind it said <laughs> no. No, no. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's something that's still held over there, but it was like the I my head exploded. I couldn't believe this actually happened. Adults wow. came to an understanding that this is the way that they wanted to move forward in their state that they're in charge of, and right. they clicked the wrong box, meaning that 
well, do they know anything at all about this issue? Well, it depends on the issue. The other thing I'm curious to know is these um, ill-begotten uh, the uh, pieces of legislation that either can't be enforced or should never have been passed to begin with. In different states, I imagine it's uh, more or less difficult to repeal these things. I'm wondering when you do pass something that outlaws, um, you know, something that people use but you know can't be legal or illegal. How difficult is it to get that off the books? Mm. I've been wondering a lot about that recently because yeah. Alabama's got some really dumb laws, few of which are still um, in force, um, you know, having yeah. to do with what you can do behind closed doors with yeah. your wife or significant other. Um, yeah. I'm not going to get into it, but in Georgia, yeah. you can get put in jail for eating chicken with a fork. Yeah, that's why I eat with chopsticks. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever the colonel says goes. I mean, I'm you know, no, there are some eat, with, eat with your there. fingers, you know, just because I can put four of them up doesn't mean that it's a fork. Wait, <laughs> Georgia, no fork, your uh, car's ready. Kentucky is chicken. okay, <laughs> but is is that is that just sort of like an uh, uh, is that an actual written law? I think so. It's something to do with fried chicken. You cannot eat fried chicken with a fork <laughs> or something silly like that. But we did the ones. Lobbied, remember, Florida. lobbied for that law. Yeah, you, women cannot skydive on Sunday in Florida. I'm like, why is that even a law? Why is that even a law? <laughs> I'm so really surprised good, that's really not question, law in the great state of Alabama. <laughs> maybe the women in Florida were just wholly out of control. Like, just all of them were lining up for skydiving. Because the instructor was cute or something. Yeah. And then they said, no, 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 no. We can't have this chaos in our state. You never yeah. underestimate the power of, you know, truly asinine, yeah. um, yeah. completely, how shall I say this, the, the fringe fundamentalist crazy people. Yeah. Never underestimate their ability to do more damage than uh, you could ever hope for. Because when Roy Moore... That awful man decided to put the Ten Commandments on his courtroom here in Alabama, the state Supreme Court. Right. We had our first Democratic senator, and I don't know how long. So let's just say everybody sh shook their head and say, no, 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 Moses didn't say that was okay. You can't do that. Hello? Yeah. yeah. And he, the, the most strict const constructors in the state was like, no, thank you, and voted him out. So let's just say yeah. sometimes people have to say their uh, absolute, yeah, their dumbest take has yet to come, and when they finally do make it known, well, good things can happen. You just have to. Wait. You made me dig. In Arizona, it is legal for a donkey to sleep in a bathtub. Wow, it is illegal. You know, I just where, think where, that, where that is, that, where that is that absolute is? overreach by the government. If I want a donkey in my bathtub, I'm gonna have a donkey in my bathtub. Well, that's inhumane. What donkey fits in a goddamn bathtub? Well, they get the little donkeys now. in mean, Arkansas. I, you can't honk your horn near a sandwich shop after 9 p.m. And where in is Arkansas? This? In Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, you can't. It's common your horn. courtesy. Rude. <laughs> You're ruling with an iron fist in Arkansas. What's up? Not much above the hot spring. Oh my god! The only like the only weird law that I heard of, and then I found out it was primarily a myth, was that in the state of Virginia it was illegal to kill a praying mantis. I don't know oh. why I received it, but I am a bona fide Arkansas traveler, and my um, certificate is signed by none other than Governor Bill Clinton. I don't know why I got. All that. right. Well, do we? You saw it first here, folks, on the Wednesday yeah. night live show. We have our first sovereign citizen on the show. I, I am like an Arkansas law. traveler. Um, what rights this affords me, I don't know. The fact yeah. that Billy Boy signed it, I don't know if that's like in the plus or minus, you know, column either. Is, is that is that thing got a little stain on it? No, I'm kidding. I Billy. spent a <laughs> lot of money around hot springs and you know, various places. I like this law in Colorado. It is illegal to keep a couch on your porch. That's a God good law. I like it. that law. <laughs> So does that mean it's back to the Adirondack and the friggin' rocking chair? Is that what this means? In in Connecticut, a pickle must be able to bounce. A pickle must be able to bounce. I bet okay. you they'll give you twenty four hours to try and like you know. Do they say how high? The side of the road. Do they say how high? Yeah, in Delaware, you can't sell dog hair. It is against the law. To sell oh, I've got hair. bags of it here at the house. I was just going to go to Delaware this summer and try to 
I was going to have a roadside dog hair stand. Have you ever had Safeway 2.5% alcoholic <laughs> beer? Like the kind of beer that they only sell on Sundays that's only bought on Sundays because you forgot to buy beer on Saturday in Colorado? Yeah. Some of the greatest mom and pop liquor store beer selection like you. I mean, there is no place where you can get better wine, uh, beer, anything you want. It's right there. The real stuff, absent the real stuff, you got it. Uh, uh, it's just, oh, is it, is it a question of money? Yeah, of course, yeah. whatever. Yeah, in Georgia, but forget to buy yeah. forget to buy something, whether it be wine, women, or song on Saturday, on Sunday, you max out at 2.5% alcohol by volume. Do you know what that is? It means it's gonna take you a that's lot longer to get drunk. Yeah, okay. that's that's less than Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's basically standardized, it's all keystone. Yeah, and keystone. it's it's like the cheap, it's yeah, it's yeah. the bottom of the cores barrel. PBR. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're worst. You have the worst, they're cheapest, like yeah, whatever offerings. It's the keystone line. That's all you can get at Albertson's. They still make and, hams. <laughs> oh my god, if they sell a 12 pack a Sunday, like one person buys that 12 pack. The Keystone brand is back in business for an entire 12 months. I mean, yeah. it's that expensive, too. Hey, Tim, in Georgia, it's illegal to live on your boat for more than 30 days. Remember that one. Remember that one. Oh, I, I will remember that. I mean, I just set up shop. I just I just parked my boat here at the local marina, and I was getting ready to go over there tonight. So you have 29 boat? days. I'm done. I'm coming back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit glamping on the 29th day. <laughs> Is this a um uh, uh how how large is this vessel or is it a vessel? I think it's just boat in general, right? I mean, it could be a dinghy. I mean, you know, you just it could be an inflatable raft. You're not allowed. Well, to you, live well, on you it. have like Lanier ferrying vessels, and then you have things that you might be able to like, you know, throw into the you know the salt pond if you, as you were. I don't. Yeah, know. we got both. We we got both. Yeah, but I'm just it's just to me the way he words that it just sounds like anything that floats. <laughs> Man, and, lots and, of things and, float that shouldn't be on yeah, the water in yeah, for yeah. We'll let it happen but i'm curious is do you have your boat at lanier or i don't have a boat I don't he doesn't have a, have a boat <laughs> how would you lie about something like that yeah, i know i know i just liar I'm liar like, pants hey, on liar. i wanted people to like me philip <laughs> i believed yeah. in you and now i don't have anybody to like go you know what is that stupid like you know Pull me on two inner tubes. I get so much air. I'm almost certain to hurt myself. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to vape on a boat for 30 days and sell dog hair and see what happens. <laughs> you know, you can get a cheap motorboat. And Last one. This one, I don't understand why this even needs to be a law. It should be common sense. In Iowa, you can't throw a brick onto the highway. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I was planning a, a, a brick throwing party <laughs> for Iowa. this weekend. <laughs> Why is everyone always raining on my parade? Damn FDA. This is where our pledge trainer, Mike Henderson, is from Iowa. So just everything that you say that's despicable about Iowa, I understand. Yeah. Oh, man. It's messed up. Do we want to talk about Caliph and how much of a, of a ribbon he took this past yeah. week? Yeah, and one more real quick since we were talking about Kentucky. Yeah. In Kentucky, a woman cannot marry the same man four times. All right. You know, <laughs> y'all got to quit breaking up and getting back together now, you know. That's why that's why they you know, it used to be in the state of Virginia when you if got If you've been married three times in another state and you moved to Kentucky, is that like do you carry that with you? I'm I'm assuming it does. <laughs> do, do I get a clean slate or what? Man, this Who is the hell important. marries the same person four times anyway? <laughs> I know. Jesus and Christ. then moves like, to what's, Kentucky. What's, what's, who knows, but what's the percentage like to of that out? actually happening? It's a long life. I need to know, you know, where to go if things, you know, get a little bit silly. It didn't work the first three times, huh? We're good. This is the fourth time's going to work. Deirdre, <laughs> if you're watching this. Please forgive me. I am just having fun. I'm, I'm exhausted. Uh, we love you very much. Go ahead, Timmy. What's the, all right? So let's that? talk about the FDA commissioner, uh, Roger Caleb, Robert Caleb, getting blasted a little bit. He was put on the point. They had the congressional hearings this past week. Uh, I did happen to see some clips online where he was kind of uh, they they basically claimed that uh, you know that they did not you know and uh, what was what was it said that he didn't. 
they didn't claim vaping to be a harm reduction product or something like that, or that they didn't endorse harm reduction or something like that. And then some congressman was giving him, uh, give him a nice speech about it exactly qualifies under the under the definition mm -hmm. of harm reduction if these products help people quit smoking. So, uh, but anyway, this is the, this was an interesting article. I thought we could take a look at because he kind of he kind of got reamed out a little bit. Uh, sure, okay. So it's FDA commissioner blasted by U.S. House Committee for failures. So in the ongoing saga of public health and regulatory challenges, FDA Commissioner Robert Califf found himself in the hot seat today as he testified before the U.S. House Oversight and Accountability Committee. The hearing delved into myriad press pressing issues surrounding FDA operations ranging from tobacco regulation to prescription drug shortages, vaccines, and the handling of recent crisis like the infant formula shortage. Did that ever get rectified? Are we are the shelves now overflowing with baby formula? I remember when that was like a big deal. People were yeah. on YouTube eating it. They yeah. were just eating it. And people, women were mad. They're like, why are you on YouTube talking about your addiction for eating baby formula when we can't even get it on the shelves? It was kind of ridiculous. FDA's failed vaping approval process under scrutiny. However, it was the spotlight on tobacco regulations that ignited bipartisan concerns and vigorous debate. As it stands today, only seven obsolete e-cigarettes and their, and their compatible cartridges have been approved by the FDA. Uh, this would be the uh, only set. Well, seven with multiple variable products within that line. So it's really kind of more than seven in totality. Uh, the entire process is under pressure in the court system with the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals handing the vaping industry a win in their scathing rebuke of the FDA's failed PMTA scheme. The FDA's lack of responsiveness was noted as earlier this year. They failed to respond to U.S. House Republicans urging an expedited approval process for smoke-free tobacco pro products. Fallout from the FDA regulations, flavor bans, increased cigarette sales. We knew about that. It is notable that the majority of adult vapors in every age bracket prefer what the FDA calls characterizing flavors. These flavors found in everything from breath mints to kombucha to hard seltzer and cannabis products are vilified as kid-friendly, but well-funded nicotine abstinence groups like the Orwellian named Truth Initiative. To date, the FDA has only approved vape products flavored with artificial tobacco notes. There you go. There's the chart. Percentage of current vapors who prefer flavors by age range. Uh, so yellow was 45 plus looks like, uh, gray is 35 to 44, orange is 25 to 34 and 20. I can barely read that squirrely graphic, but it looks like it says 28 to 30 to 34 is blue. So 90%, uh, prefer flavors uh, in, in the, um, in the blue category in the yellow category was 45 which is interesting to me so that was why, that why wouldn't we turn the question around ask it from the point of view of how many prefer tobacco flavors right and not, that so that's why i find that i find that interesting yeah. that people in the 45 plus age bracket don't seem to think that flavors uh are uh, percentage of they pref that prefer flavors so what are you trying to say do you prefer the tobacco that's kind of like the message that that is particularly yeah. sensitive. I would say there are a lot of adult smokers out there that that simply that either think that these are just as bad as cigarettes still, and yeah. thankfully that I'm, we're seeing some movement on that um, incomprehensible problem. And also, the one thing that I, I'll give um, Will Truman gets credit for this statement, but it was true of me. It was a decent tobacco flavored vape that initially got me uh, to stop smoking, but it was a variety of flavors that ultimately led me to quit smoking. Right. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is I mean, I, I don't. I think it's common knowledge that flavors are instrumental in in allowing people to persist with going down this path of of using vaping to get away from smoking because it helps break people and disassociate from that flavor profile that they've been a part of for so long and and you know a little flavor goes a long way you know what i mean because what because even i experienced that personally like like i'm somewhere 
and I'll be outside or somewhere in an environment where there's somebody smoking. And look, I'm not criticizing the person who's choosing to smoke. I'm not in their face like, hey, you should quit. It's not good for you. You should vape. Sure. But I'm just saying, I. but even I am kind of turned off by that smell anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like I smell it and I'm like, God, I'm so glad I don't do that anymore. Because you think about all the consequences of that same smell and like how it gets on you. And it's on your clothes and it's in your car and it's in your house and it's on your couch and it's in your mouth and all that stuff. And, you know, it just you you feel a, a sense of accomplishment, you know, and I just don't think I oh, would yeah. have been nearly as successful on a tobacco flavored vape as I was since flavors were more prevalent and available. But I think I've also redoubled my efforts not to shame or uh, point out or do anything. As a matter of fact, the opposite, because I think for uh, very. I guess for a long time, I didn't care if anybody was, you know, uh, ostracizing me as a smoker. Let's just say now uh, at a certain age, I see just how really awful it is on many different, but on a, um, I guess there is, there is very little humanity and, and decency in the world just to start, yeah. but none uh, receive less than your average cigarette smoker. Right. I mean, let's just say, yeah, people, you know, yeah, top 10 most wanted, you know, whatever, FBI, they're uh, receiving, you know, the benefit of the doubt, whereas your, you know, your average smoker just trying to find a place that permits smoking, yeah, they're not getting as much respect, I don't think. No, I agree. I agree. So I'm trying, at the very least, not to um, add to that problem. Right. <clears throat> The freedom to obtain vapes and common fruit and beverage flavors found in every consumable good on the market is not just an issue of personal preference. The adult market's rejection of faux tobacco and artificial cigarette flavors is so comprehensive that cigarette sales increase in areas with flavor bans. Truth. Uh, I'm not going to get... This is very difficult to see. The graphics they included on their site are very kind of blurry. It's just more or less a chart. It looks like kind of like a flow chart. Uh, comparison against vape and cigarette sales data over four weeks intervals from January 2018 through March 2023, a period during which flavor restrictions went from affecting 1.3% of the U.S. population to affecting 38%. Data collected from ordinary brick and mortar establishments like gas stations, groceries, and convenience stores for every 0.7 milliliter of e-cigarette e-liquid that goes unsold due to flavor restrictions. 15 additional tradition, tra 15 additional traditional cigarettes are sold. It's almost like a rap verse on the, <clears throat> of the increase in cigarette sales, 71% were non menthol cigarettes, suggesting that restrictions on menthol cigarettes would not substantially reduce sales. E-cigarette flavor restrictions in place for a year or longer yielded 20% increase in sales of cigarette brands disproportionately used by underage smokers. So, I mean, we knew that was coming. You're going to take it away. You know, people are just going to go right back to cigarettes or that's what they're going to buy if that's the only thing available. Uh, what to vaping abstinence lobbyists is simply a let them eat cake situation for adults vapors to deal with and suffer through is in fact a brewing health crisis that directly benefits the tobacco industry in terms of both increased cigarette sales and the fact that they're that only their simulated tobacco e-liquids have received the fda stamp of approval that the tobacco industry's vaping products are also vastly more expensive than their independent rivals surely plays a role in the increase in cigarette sales as well well we always said that was going to be a problem if you're going to out tax or make the uh, the safer uh, alternative, more yeah. expensive, people are going to go for the cheaper uh, option. And especially in today's uh, socioeconomic environment, you know, people are having to become more cost conscious, you know, and not buying those those items that are costing them more, cutting back. So yeah. probably driving people back to cigarettes, uh, you know, uh, as an unintended consequence or an intended consequence, I should say. The intended. table below compares the cost per milliliter for big tobacco e-cigarettes and popular disposable vapes. Note that the most popular tobacco industry vape, the Views Alto, has no more authorization to be on the market than the disposable vapes to which it is being compared. So this is cost per milliliter. Uh, Views Alto pod, reg the... Manufacturer's uh, recommended price twenty four ninety nine seven point two milliliter cost per milliliter three dollars and forty seven cents. 
So if, if, we, if we step back from the menthol issue just for a second, this is yep. a very important study. Alex Lieber, Mike Pesco um, co-authored at least, and they they uh, did research on top of I believe it was uh, current but older research, so they could extrapolate uh, you know the consequences of banning uh, you know vapors you know pods you know certain types of vapes because of flavor brands all kind of stuff and they came uh out to it was somewhere around uh, for every pod something like 14 additional cigarettes are sold for every yeah. pod that is taken off the market due to flavor restriction which right. is kind of mind-blowing on every level it is yeah i mean it's just bad news i mean i i, I don't like I, I don't like i i don't understand their line of thinking but obviously we have to give some credit to the fact that big tobacco is in their back pocket. So they're just sort of, you know, appeasing the master, so to speak. But uh, Tim, so think, think about it this way. They want to ban menthol, create new criminals for absolutely no reason. There's, there, there's nothing to gain here. Yeah. There's an illicit market just waiting to happen. You're not helping people and you're certainly not getting racial justice for people who don't even know what the hell you're talking about. So what you're doing, you're creating illicit market and, uh this that which was not crime before is now criminal right yeah it's how it's, is that social or racial justice that's the antithesis of I think. exactly it's it's a backwards way of thinking it's just it it just boggles the mind the way they think sometimes and if the biden administration didn't already know that they wouldn't be dragging their heels like they are exactly so significant moments during testimony. Yesterday's hearing witnessed significant moments, including Representative Comer's questioning about whether the current regulatory framework at the center of tobacco products aligns with the original intentions of Congress when the Tobacco Control Act was enacted. He referred to the Reagan Udall Foundation and recent court rulings to support his inquiry. Additionally, Representative Fry from South Carolina raised concerns regarding harm reduction. This is the piece I saw. Drawing parallels to former FDA Commissioner Gottlieb's mission, Fry referenced a Harvard study indicating an increase in cigarette sales and questioned Commissioner Kaloff, Kaloff, Kaliff, uh, on the authorization of 900 new cigarette products compared to only a few e-cigarettes. He further queried whether the FDA still upholds the concept of a risk continuum and aims to transition adults to safer tobacco products. I was blown away by Representative Fry's. Um, yeah, his time was extremely impressive. Absolutely, it was. Uh, Comer questioned Califf on harm reduction, asking if vaping is safer than smoking, and questioned Califf about backlogs and if CTP will potentially approve more products in the future. Uh, obviously, we don't have time to watch all the videos, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, if you want this link, I'll go ahead and put it in the chat, and then you can go and watch the uh, line of questioning so i'll put that in here now so i don't forget so good man, you, good man. representative fry is, is particularly satisfying for all you beautiful people there's your link it's in the chat now uh in a concluding remark Re representative Re representative comer highlighted the prevailing uncertainty surrounding the fda's regulatory approach particularly concerning vape products he emphasized the importance of clarity and transparency in fda policies especially in such critical areas. Members of the committee were, were reminded that they have five days to submit written questions to him, signaling a continued dialogue and investigation into the matter. So recap of bipartisan concerns. How much longer is this going? Kind of goes on for a bit. I don't want to take up the rest of our time just sort of reading through this article. Um, here's kind of some of the stuff that uh, Commissioner Califf, uh, well, let's kind of touch on these a little bit. Uh, that's the FDA's vaping scheme. The FDA's perceived reactivity and feeling of being overwhelmed and managed. Well, that be, boo too many applications, delays in reviewing tobacco product applications, failure to meet statutory review periods. Yeah, they kind of fumbled the ball quite a bit. Move goalposts too. Lack of effective regulatory enforcement. Lack of responsiveness from the FDA. Concerns over unintended consequences of proposed regulations, such as the ban on mental too many cigarettes. legal challenges. Don't forget that one. Exactly. Uh, so this was what kind of what Califf kind of rattled off. So in his testimony, Dr. Califf addressed these concerns with a mix of reassurance strategy and acknowledgement of the complexities at hand. Highlighted the progress made by the Center for Tobacco Products in reviewing PMT applications, asserting that 99% of applications have been reviewed with efforts ongoing to expedite the remainder. Well, I mean, how many is that left at 1%? 1%. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, emphasize the, emphasize the need for PMT authorizations to align with a public health standard, considering population wide risks and benefits, cessation likelihood among tobacco users and initiation likelihood among non users, detailed increased enforcement efforts, targeting illicit tobacco products, including warning letter, letters, civil penalties and seizures at ports of entry advocated for congressional action to impose user fees on vapor manufacturers to bolster enforcement capabilities, increase the customs border patrol and department of justice to enhance enforcement measures acknowledge the concept of tobacco harm reduction recognizing that while no tobacco product is entirely safe alternatives like vapor products offer potential benefits compared to traditional cigarette smoking okay well let's give them a little credit there um why uh just basically saying that what we've been saying all along and that is is that you know they they are less risky and safer for you than you had one job Right. Not let people die, preventable diseases, and you misplace 400 pages of toxicology reports. What's wrong with you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Pointed to data indicating a reduction in overall youth tobacco usage, including vapor products. Recognize the potential for increased illicit sales if proposed regulations banning menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars are enacted, but stress the broader public health benefits of such measures. If you would like to, there is the entire hearing available for you to watch. Yeah. And Sam put the link in chatty. So you can find it there. Right there for you if you want to follow up on that. But uh, some interesting counterpoints. It's good to see these uh, big wig talking figure people kind of have to get under, take a little heat. You know, they they do need to be challenged for what they're doing. And I, I applaud any congressman who uh, stands up and makes uh, valid points with regard to the benefits of vaping. Especially the ones made by Fry. They, I mean, they were the farthest thing from partisan. These are uh, these are common sense talking points that had Caleb at a loss for words. I mean, the most fundamental basic questions. Uh, and he, he, he waffled and, and Fry was just, can you answer, you know, this question is what you're doing, not, you know, uh, you know, keeping people smoking or, you know, are you, are you afraid to offer them the, um, you know, demonstrably safer alternative or what's the problem here? Yeah. Caleb, it's complicated. Well, explain it to me like I'm a United States, you know, member. Of yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we are just about out of time. People uh, don't forget. Let me put this up here. Where is it? Where is it? Why isn't it not on here? I don't know. There it is. Because, John, you're half asleep. Don't forget to come join me tomorrow for In the Vapor. For that gentleman down there at the bottom, we're going to get to know him a lot better. And uh, you know my kind of questions. Always fun. Uh, It's about fun. It's not about vaping. It's about having fun and getting to know a little bit more about Philip. His quirks, his likes, his dislike. We already know Phil does not like pineapple on pizza. That's my man. You I have that like going it. for me. If I may say so, John, you've done an amazing job, uh, quietly done an amazing job interviewing yeah. uh, various uh, heroes of mine and everyone's in the community. And I'm, I'm just, I'm honored to be um, part of this. And yeah. you've, if anyone, uh, I feel everyone should go back and watch some of his interviews uh, with Janine Timmons and Addie Tooney. They were really, really yeah. quite uh, memorable. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Jason Bates is next on the list after Philip. He will be on the, I think it's the 25th, but uh, Philip tomorrow in the hot seat. In the hot seat, Philip. <laughs> I'm just going to come on in, have on my tie. I'm not going to bother taking it off. You can poke fun if you must. No, I have actually added a new one because I wanted to know a little bit more. So I'm going to give you a heads up. I want to know a little bit more about Philip. And his ASU days. So I, I want to know a little bit more about it. So get ready for one of those questions uh, of Philip walking around campus in Arizona. What was Philip up to? We'll, we'll, we'll get into that one too. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, oh, um, uh, well, you'll answer it tomorrow. You, you have time to think about I it. I don't <laughs> know if I am permitted to answer certain <laughs> questions. I might have to get in touch with law enforcement, Tempe, in, in particular. Um, yeah, the, uh, nothing to incriminate yourself with. Yeah. Well, it, well, statue of limitations, Phil. It's been well, a while. I was still, quote unquote, <laughs> uh, wait, I forget. Are, are they starting to like, okay, are, are they are they taking account at 18? 
<laughs> or 19. I don't know. Yeah. In Arizona, it's pretty much whenever you do something that hits yeah. the news. I never did anything that hit, you know, in the prime yeah. time yeah. news, but yeah, you know, I got it all out of my system freshman year. I just don't remember if that was in time to be um, expunged from my record. That yeah. means. Yeah, I, I, I kind of the question is going to be basically a year last year because that was a big year for ASU, uh, especially with the Rose Bowl. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So you Iowa into the 96, 97, 97, Arizona 97 Rose State. Bowl. Yeah, Rose Bowl, Iowa, 97 uh, Iowa, Rose Ohio. Bowl, 96, yeah. 11, and oh, Johnny. Yeah. Well, Didn't you know that? We'll, Don't let we'll, anybody we'll get into tell all you that. different. We'll get into that. All right, everybody, look into the camera and say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you for watching.